Hello, I am Laura from Buas and I'm going to show you something that I discovered together with Radi and a friend of mine. Um, so I wanted to make something that could select individual parts of my HCA in the engine, not in Houdini, and delete them. But uh, for some reason I couldn't get it to work and I followed different tutorials and forums that explained how to be able to select separate meshes in the engine, but I, nothing really worked. So I asked Radi for help and he showed me different examples, but in the end, they also didn't work. So we decided to look into it. And one of the ideas was to gather the points, convert the positions of those and put them in a curve because the curve is editable in the engine, which is nice. So that's our goal. We want to have the points that are on a specific place in your tool. And we want to have those converted into a curve so you can adjust them or delete them or use them however you want. So let's get into it. So first off, we're going to make a geo node. Go in and we'll get a sphere and then an ISO offset, get a scatter. And let's use 10 points for now. So normally, or in my case, for my tool, they should be in a specific spot, not randomly selected points. So after the points, we'll start to make our little code. Now we want to convert these points. For each point, we want to have the position information, which is a vector. Now you can see this in a geometry spreadsheet. So this information is what we want. If we get a curve tool, one of the discoveries I made during this little experiment is that the coordinations to create those points is actually made from a string. So our code has to be a string as well for it to work. So now we know the curve needs a string. So we'll begin by making a string. So let's say position info is an empty string. Then we'll need a for loop for each point. So we're going to make an int e, which is a zero. Then if the e is smaller or i is smaller than number of points, it should add one. So now we can go through all the points and get their vector information. Because a position is a vector, we'll start by making a vector. So each point is, we're going to take the point, which is the first input, and we're going to look for the position. And the index number is E. So now we'll have for each point, we'll have the position information. But we need to put all these information in the position in info. So next, we'll append. And what append does is it gets the information that you put in, and it puts it in a string that we already created. So. Because these values are a float, we'll use percent %f, and the source of the information will be each point. Now, all the vector information that is in each point will be placed in the string of position information. So we can check this. So if we print position info. So if you print position info, we'll get something like this. So you have three values and then a bracket. 
but these brackets are actually an issue. If I go in here and I place these brackets and I display it, it will give me an error. It doesn't expect these squiggly brackets. So we need to remove those. So that's our next step. Let's disable this. And now we'll replace those squiggly brackets for spaces. So let's get to position info and take a replace. And get these brackets and replace it for a space. Now we can get this, place it underneath, and choose this one around. Now, if we print this, let's carry this one, you can see it now only has spaces. In the beginning it has one, and in the middle it has two. Now these extra spaces don't have effect on the final curve. So if I change these, for extra spaces. And let's exaggerate for a bit, right? This doesn't matter. It doesn't give an error. It just makes the curve how it expects it to be. So now that we have this information, we'll go to bindings and add one binding. The VEX parameter that we want to take is position info. And let's call this string list. Now we can finally use this attribute in the curve. So let's connect these two and remove this. Normally, expressions do not work in a curve. You have to enable it first. So if you go to expressions, you can go to toggle expression. For the sake of clarity, I'll be using back quotes and to we'll take unique false with an S because it's a string. And now we can see what it needs. So it needs a surface mode, which will be the attribute wrangle one, a class, which is D point, an attribute, which we just created, which is string list, and an index. Let's get the attribute wrangle, get D point, string list, and then zero. So now, if you would apply this, you would see it. This is fine, but if you put this in the engine, it would break. It would crash the engine immediately. We don't want that. It needs to be an expression. And the, o the way to see that is when this whole black part is actually more of a bluish color. So we need to change that. And that's why we had to toggle the expression. Now let's click on edit expression and this is the thing we need, and apply. You have to do toggle expression first, or else edit expression and apply will not work. When this is green, it means you did it right. Now, if we add the back quotes again, it will give an error, because it doesn't expect it when giving an expression. So, now that we have this, we're done. So let's test it in engine. Let's make an output. Let's go out and give this a name. Let's say edible points. Let's just able to print first. Okay. All right. Now let's create a digital asset. Edible points is fine. Let's go to node and grab the curve and put it into edible nodes. Now we're done. Click accept. Go to Unreal. Look for your HDA. Place it in the engine. To the scene. Now it will start up Houdini engine. And now you can see it works. So we can see the points. We can select them individually. Move them around. We can also delete them. So this can be very useful if you have an issue like what I have, 
and that is I want to have those individual points which are actually in this one but you cannot see them and delete them because there are certain places in my scaffolding that I want to delete. This might be useful for you too so I thought I would share this. Thanks again to Radislav for helping me out and my friend Janik. Thank you for listening and I hope this was useful for you.